put a thumbs up if you can hear the audio. Okay, good, great. Uh, so the audio is, uh, is back. So one uh, lucky winner is going to win two fabulous bottles of champagne. Uh, it's easy uh, to win. Uh, after the trivia, go ahead and go to our Instagram account and uh, find out more there. Uh, Napa Valley Wine Academy on Instagram. All the details are there. Uh, and Jess, who is our host today for Champagne Trivia, will have more information at the end uh, of this uh, show as well. So let me go ahead and bring Jess on uh, screen. Jess, so great to have you here uh, today. How are, how's everything in Nashville? Oh, doing great. Thank you, Chris. Excellent, excellent. So Jess, fill us in on uh, today's format and uh, what, what, what you got for us. Sure thing. So today is all about champagne, as you said, and this wonderful presentation is through our partners with the Champagne Bureau USA. Um, the Champagne Bureau is located in D.C. and they're representatives of the Comité de Champagne, a um, trade organization that represents all of the grape growers and houses in Champagne. So we have about 20 questions all about champagne. So if you all are ready, we'll go ahead and get started. Excellent. Thanks, okay, so our First question, which country imports the most champagne annually? Is it A, China, B, United Kingdom, C, Ireland, or D, United States? What do y'all think? And for those of you who are regulars here on our um, uh, trivia, uh, Monday trivia, you know the Jeopardy music is playing. Give you about 25 seconds to lock in your uh, answers and then we'll go ahead and reveal uh, at the end. So, most champagne annually by volume. Okay, a lot of answers coming through and uh, it is split. Uh, most people saying United Kingdom, but some people also putting United States uh, as well with a couple of Chinas thrown in there. All right, well, the answer for you smarties out there is indeed B, the United Kingdom. But follow-up question, which country imports the second most champagne? Mm, okay, so we'll give you a couple those, of seconds here to lock in your answers. From the same list of answers there. So would that be China, Ireland, or the United States? Okay, waiting for some answers to come in. Okay, so they're uh, starting, to, starting to come in. We have US, uh, China, uh, someone else is guessing, but uh, looks like right now US uh, is the most um, selected answer. They are right. It is indeed the United States. So the US might be second in champagne imports by volume, but we are first in value imports. I like to think I contribute to that a bit myself. <laughs> All right, so question number two. Fill in the blank, please. The composition of the subsoil in Champagne is predominantly blank, which provides good drainage. Is that going to be sand, A, B, limestone, C, gravel, or D, peat? Okay, music's playing. So which of these is predominantly in the subsoil of Champagne providing good drainage? Sand, limestone, gravel, or peat? Okay, we have some pretty good uh, consensus. A lot of people locking in the answer B, limestone, uh, with a couple of C's thrown in there as well. Well, limestone is definitely going to be the right answer here and that limestone chalky soil provides that good drainage as well as imparting some minerality to some styles of champagne. So good job y'all. Okay, question number three. True or false? The largest bottle of champagne is called, when oh, I had to work on pronouncing this, um, Melikadesic, I believe, Umuda, which holds 40 regular bottles of champagne. True or false? Okay, that's a tough one. Largest bottle of champagne called a Melikadesic Omuda, holding 40 bottles of regular champagne.
Okay, everyone so far has locked in false as their uh, as their answer. You think it's made up? Yeah. It is indeed true. It is indeed true. Um, this is apparently a biblical reference to the book of Genesis, and this guy brings the wine. Apparently, he brought uh, 40 bottles of it. So. Okay, that was a tough one. And, yeah. Our next question, another true or false. Maybe this one will be better for y'all. Um, there are an average of 100,000 bubbles in a standard bottle of champagne. True or false? One hundred thousand bubbles, standard bottle of champagne. So I, I want to know who was put in charge of counting those. <laughs> okay, so not much consensus on this one. We have uh, true and false as. Uh, as the as the answers. Well, this one is indeed false because it's not 100,000. It's 58 million bottle bubbles in a standard bottle of champagne. So I'm with you, Chris. I wonder who counted all of those. <laughs> I'll volunteer for the next time. <laughs> you volunteer as tribute. I do. <laughs> Uh, question number five. Okay, so the blending of a non-vintage champagne can combine which of the following? A, different crews, B, different crews and different grape varieties, C, different grape varieties and different years, or D, all of the above, different grape varieties, different crews and different years. So what are we blending together? And in this case, when we're talking about crews, really talking about different growths, different vineyard sites. Okay, here we have overwhelming uh, answer uh, choice is D, different grape varieties, different crews, and different years. Excellent, excellent. All of the above. We have our Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, Meunier, different vineyard sites, different vintages, absolutely. That's our blend. Question number six. Toward the end of their long resting period, the bottles must be moved and rotated to loosen the sediment thrown off by the second fermentation. What is this process called? Is it A, tirage, B, blending, C, riddling, or D, disgorgement? So which of these is that process used to loosen up the yeast and collect it down toward the neck of the bottle? Tirage, blending, riddling, or disgorgement. Okay, some more consensus here for C, riddling. Absolutely correct. Riddling is indeed the answer followed by disgorgement when we actually remove the yeast. Perfect. All right, so question number seven, true or false? The best glass to serve your champagne in is a coupe glass. Is it a coupe glass, like so, which I'm hoping you can see around my background. So, is this the best glass to serve your champagne, true or false? Okay, some more consensus here with false being the uh, the answer chosen. And that is correct, a tulip is a better glass for your champagne, so your bubbles will stream and they'll last longer. I like a coupe, I think they're pretty, I think they're fun, but really the 
best glass would definitely be a tulip, even though the coops are cute. So. All right, our next question, number eight here. Another true or false. Champagne earned its appellation de origine controlée in 1958. True or false? Did Champagne earn its AOC status in 1958? Okay, uh, everyone saying false uh, on this question as well. Excellent, excellent, I'm impressed. It's 1936, you are correct, it's false. 1936, when the first round of um, French AOCs were approved, Champagne was among those, absolutely, 1936. All right, next question. Who planted the first Champagne vineyards? Was it A, the Vikings, B, the Barbarians, C, the Greeks, or D, Romans. Back in third century AD, was it Vikings, Barbarians, Greeks, or Romans? Okay, we have mostly Romans with a couple of Greeks thrown in for good measure. Excellent. It was indeed the Romans back in the day. Long time back. Next quest. Another true or false. Rosé champagne is most commonly made by blending red and white wines from champagne. True or false? Can we blend red and white champagne to make a rosé champagne? True or false? Okay, here not as much consensus in the la as in the last one, so uh, split here between true and false. Well, this is indeed true. Um, you can blend red and white wines to make a rosé champagne, but it's not the only way. What's the other way to make a rosé champagne? Free form answer here. Free form answer. So go ahead and put those in the uh, in the comment section. Okay, to inspire you, I'll play a little music. <laughs> so this is worth bragging rights and extra credit. Okay, the most people putting in here Sanyi as the second method. Uh, would we consider maceration Sanyi? It's not the bleeding, right? Instead, we're doing direct maceration. So we put the Pinot Noir and Meunier in with their, with the juices and let it macerate for 24 to 72 hours, depending on the year, depending on the intensity of the colors. So not the bleeding, but instead just maceration. Great, and so, there are, close. I'll shout out to Amy at Lafleur and Al for all putting short maceration uh, as well. So congratulations to them. Well done, bragging rights, extra glass of champagne. Our next question. Um, the most expensive bottle of champagne was handcrafted from 18 carat, excuse me, 18 carat solid gold with a deep cut 19 carat white diamond at its center. How much did this ridiculous bottle cost? <laughs> 
was at 4.8 million, uh, 987,000, 2.07 million, or $361,000. While you're locking in your answers there, I'm going to say I would probably be more interested just in the champagne itself than the gold or diamond. Hopefully the champagne itself was delicious as well. <laughs> I don't know if she's going to show up. There's a cat rapidly approaching me here. <laughs> okay, so we have here um, uh, some people saying no idea. Uh, some people saying, so we have uh, selection across the board. All right, well, the answer... Keep, uh, Gets you out of your suspense here. It was $2.07 million. Sounds like somebody fun to invite to a party if they'll bring one with them. Um, but we'll see. Our next question, number 12 here. Um, the minimum period in the cellar for non-vintage champagne wines is A, 18 months, B, 15 months, C, 12 months, or D, 6 months minimum period for cellaring for non-vintage champagne 18 15 12 or six months Okay, so we have um, answers here. A B and C are the ones that are getting the most uh, the most votes in this round. I, I thought that might be the case. The answer is 15 months because we're talking total cellaring time. The non-vintage wines, if you're thinking 12 months, it's 12 months required on the leaves, but 15 months total. Of course, many non-vintage champagne will spend closer to two or three years total cellaring time. Okay, next question. True or false, the ideal temperature to appreciate a champagne wine is between 53 and 57 degrees Fahrenheit or 12 to 14 centigrade. True or false? So how chilled is our champagne to be chilled? 53 to 57 degrees Fahrenheit, true or false? Okay, here, survey says, um, the, the collective mind is saying false on this, this answer. Wisdom of the collective, indeed. It should be more chilled, 50, excuse me, 47 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit or eight to 10 centigrade. Yes, well chilled for our bubbles. All right, next question. Marilyn Monroe once famously took a bath in champagne. How many bottles did it take to fill up the bathtub? A, 350, B, 100, C, 800, or D, 570 bottles? How many bottles to fill up a bathtub full of champagne? I want to know the poor person who had to open all those bottles. <laughs> well, and it was a big bathtub too, because the standard bathtub's only about 42 gallons, so you'd fill it up about 30 gallons, but she used more than that, so it was a big tub. Okay, so we have most people agreeing on 350 bottles. Correct, 350 bottles of champagne for Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe's bath time. Yes. Okay, hopefully she had a straw with her. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, a quote here for you. Who once famously said, remember, gentlemen, it's not just France we are fighting for, it's champagne. Was it A, Alexander Millerand, B, Franklin Roosevelt, C, Napoleon Bonaparte, or D, Winston Churchill? So who said this famous quote? Not just France we're fighting for, but champagne. 
you're not familiar with the first gentleman, Alexander Millerand was the French PM and then president in the 1920s. A little context for you. Okay, so we have uh, some consensus here that it was uh, Winston Churchill. It was famous quote of Winston Churchill rallying the troops during World War II. Oh, yes. All right, next question here, another true or false. Vintage champagne must be aged for at least 36 months. True or false? Three years of age minimum for our vintage champagne. Okay, more consensus here with uh, true uh, being the most selected answer. And it is indeed true. Vintage champagne must be aged a minimum of three years, but most, of course, will be closer to four years or ten years, somewhere in there. Yep. Question. Champagne from someone who makes and markets their own label with grapes exclusively sourced from their own vineyards is labeled what? Is it A, N, M, B, R, M? C, C, M, or D, R, C. So we're looking at a grower producer here. What little abbreviation is on their label? N, M, R, M, C, M, R, C. Okay, uh, here we have again some consensus with B, R, M as the answer. Indeed, R, M. And for those of you who said R, M, what does R, M stand for? Okay, so go ahead and put uh, what R, M stands for, the abbreviation, into the uh, comment section. We'll play a little music here. What does RM stand for? Grower producers here. Okay, so we have uh, several people putting in uh, Recolant Manipulant as their uh, answer. Indeed, they are correct. Recolant Manipulant versus NM, which would be our Negotiant, CM, Cooperative, and then that RC was. Um, Single producer, but made at a co-op. Yep. Nice work. Okay, little climate question here for Champagne. Average annual temperature in the region of Champagne is 52 degrees Fahrenheit, 11 centigrade. True or false? Fifty-two Fahrenheit. 11 centigrade, true or false? Okay, here we have some trues and some falses, so uh, there's a little dis disagreement as to the right answer. Well, this is indeed true. It was a cool continental climate, annual temperatures of 52 Fahrenheit or 11 centigrade. All right, moving along, one more quote here. Um, who famously said, I only drink champagne on two occasions, when I'm in love and when I'm not? Was that A, Coco Chanel, B, Marilyn Monroe, 
C, Cher, or D, Audrey Hepburn? Who said I only drink champagne on two occasions, when I'm in love and when I'm not? Was this Coco Chanel, Marilyn Monroe, Cher, or Ms. Audrey Hepburn? Okay, here we have the A, B, C, and Ds of answers, so all over the place. Well, I'm sure anybody could have said this, but Coco Chanel is one who did. So, a uh, fantastic little quote there. I think this is our last question of the afternoon. So when is Champagne Day 2020? Is it A, December 1st, B, October 23rd, C, November 17th, or D, New Year's Eve, December 31st? When is Champagne Day this year? December 1, October 23rd, November 17th, or December 31st? The answer is actually my birthday, so if anybody <laughs> knows me well enough, that would help them with the answer here too. Okay, before I, I put in there what everyone put, I love this one answer. It should be every day, but I'm choosing yeah. B. So, uh, and it happens to be that most people have chosen B as their answer. Indeed, it is true. Uh, this Friday, October 23rd, is Champagne Day 2020 and my birthday. Everybody, please have a bottle of champagne. Uh, raise a glass. <laughs> so, uh, if you would like to win free champagne, the Champagne Bureau is giving away two bottles. Um, just do a handful of things with our social media. So like the, Shan um, the Napa Valley Wine Academy's Champagne Day Instagram post. One should have gone up right at about 2 o'clock Pacific time for you to find. Um, follow the Napa Valley Wine Academy and Champagne Official on Instagram. Please comment, tag two friends who you would love to share champagne with. Um, and then please share our post to your Instagram story, tagging both Napa Valley Wine Academy and Champagne Official. Excellent. Well, what a, what a fun uh, trivia uh, segment today. Jess, thanks so much and a beautiful presentation of all those um, questions as well. Um, so make sure, head on over to our Instagram account. You'll have all the rules there. Find the post that has uh, all the specifications for how to enter uh, the contest, the Champagne Day contest. You'll definitely want to do that. A lot of people are taking part, so can't wait to reveal the two lucky winners. And then, of course, um, October 23rd, make sure you run out, uh, get some bubbly and get some champagne and uh, celebrate on social media with your friends. Um, do a Zoom friends call, uh, share what you're experiencing. We'd love to know uh, what you're drinking um, and uh, any comments you have around that. So I know you're gonna be celebrating just because it's your birthday. So uh, I think that's why Champagne Day exists originally right to celebrate your birthday of course <laughs> so uh have early happy birthday and um we look forward to seeing all your posts on instagram twitter and facebook in the meantime uh, join us back here on wednesday uh, 2 p.m pacific daylight time for our study hall uh, we have a great study hall uh, for you this week uh, and then of course we'll see you uh, on social media on october 23rd for champagne day in the meantime cheers everyone thanks jess thank you